Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another DIYery. I haven't done one of these in quite some time. Today I want to share with you the whole process of getting the skirting boards done. I did a lot of painting in the dining room and I have put all my furniture back kind of differently so there's, it, there's a whole transformation in the sitting room and the dining room and I think it's looking the best it's ever looked. So I want to share that with you today and keep you updated with what's going on with my crumbly old house. You might remember during lockdown I actually switched what was the sitting room with this room which was the dining room and now the dining room's in the sitting room and the sitting room's in here because it's such a cozy space in here, it's much more inviting and the kind of space you want to cuddle up in in the evening. But at that time I was about to get some skirting board done but lockdown happened so I, ju I just did my best and tried to make it look a bit more homey and entertain myself while I was bored. But you've seen me do all of that and this video is about what I've done since. So the first thing I did was actually a couple of months ago when on a whim I decided I was going to paint the accent wall in the dining room. To prep for painting I took everything off of the shelves and the walls, I took the brackets off of the walls, I've done this too many times, I've painted this wall too many times but I'm going to stick with the colour, I promise. And I do maintain the fact that painting is the cheapest and quite frankly a very easy way to make over a whole room and just give it a completely different feel. And this colour is Soft Wool by Valspar, I had a little bit of it left over from another room in my house. It's a warm white so it's not too clinical and it still it keeps a lot of the warmth in the room which I really like. And I know a few people might be disappointed that I covered up a colourful accent wall but in the summer it looked lovely and blue but in the winter it was very grey looking and it was quite gloomy and it just made the walls feel like they were closing in on each other which is such a shame because I, I really loved the colour in the summer when the lovely light was coming through. Anyway, I decided to just go for white and put accent colours into all my soft furnishings instead. And once I had my second coat on the wall, I was able to peel off all of the tape. My favourite part, I peel this off when the wall is still slightly damp to avoid any chips. Oh, I love peeling the tape. I love it. You can tell the massive difference that painting that one wall made in the space in the dining room. It just feels a lot less cold and it's so much easier to play around with accent colours and change colours around in the room in the soft furnishing by having a plainer colour on the wall. So with that done, let's talk about the main event, the skirting board, the thing I've been talking about doing for so very long. So what did this look like before? Well, I was kind of avoiding showing it on video or pictures and I'd actually sort of placed loads of clutter around the edges of the room so you couldn't see the skirting board very well. It was very grim. This is what it looked like. Some areas were okay and some areas were just horrendous. This whole space used to be two separate rooms and I obviously had the wall knocked down but even so there was still four or five different types of skirting board between the two rooms and you could tell that once something had been damaged it was just taken off and replaced with anything that could be found and patched up. Anyway, it took me quite a while to figure out what I was going to do with it. The skirting board is very, very tall. It's not the kind of skirting board you can find pre-made at Juicen's. You normally have to get a carpenter to make it with MDF board and then a piece of architrave at the top, which is a really good way to do it, but it can prove very pricey because it's very labor intensive. And I was pretty keen on trying to save a few pennies, so I scoured the internet and I found a place called Skirting Express and they make it at this height and loads of other heights of course and I was able to get it delivered. I was a bit worried because they had pretty bad reviews but everything was fine so I've left them a five star review because I think they deserved it and uh, yeah. The thing I like most about these skirting boards is they come pre-primed which is gonna save me about 60 to 70 pounds on not having to buy two tins of primer to paint them all. This is some of the footage of what was happening over the last few weeks. My carpenter's been working very very hard on this so if you see this, thank you very much. <laughs> This was the room the night before everything got completely turned upside down. Oh, 
the calm before the storm. But as you can see here are a few more clips of some of the skirting board. It just looked horrible. It was so disgusting. And also I had this boarded up mantelpiece with a really horrible corrugated board on it. And as you can see from this footage, behind it was just an empty hole. Sadly, there was no lovely fireplace waiting to be found. I know, gutting. So because this is a very small room and I've also got a fireplace in the dining room, I decided to get my carpenter to board it up so I could paint over it. It's just been boarded, it can be taken off by another owner in the future and reinstalled if needs be. It's not permanent. So um, I just thought it'd be nice to have that wall space so that I could push my couch against it. Anyway, this is some of the footage of what was happening over the course of a few weeks. Well, I think it was more like seven, eight days. Not really a few weeks then, was it? But it felt like a very long time, but it all came together in the end. This is what the skirting board looked like on the morning that it was fitted. As you can see, I have a very empty dining room, but the skirting board is looking good. I can't believe it looks like an actual room now. Like it, it looks like it's finally finished. He's done all around the bay window. He's also filled in and sanded all of the joins and holes and it's looking nice and tidy. And this is what the room's looking like empty. Looks so good. That room has also been done, but you can't really see what's going on because it's full of stuff. <laughs> oh, look at that. So nice and clean. Believe it or not, it's done behind the bag as well. Very nice. He's also filled this section for me as well. And he tidied up the top up there. Because of this jutting out, covering the pipes, to put the coving around, it would have to jut out really far. And I thought that would look really awkward, but it looked a bit awkward the way it was. So we just put that little piece there and I'm gonna paint it white. And hopefully that should tidy up quite a lot. The skirting board might not look as fancy as some of the pieces that were in here before, but it's called OG, that's the style name, and it matches with what's on my doors. It also matches what's in the hallway, so I just, I would rather it all match and look a little bit more simple than look way too ornate and completely out of place. I then spent that afternoon cleaning the floors and putting everything back in its place to make sure it was nice and tidy. did before putting everything back was a couple of touch-ups in this room here.
that it's clean, I guess I should show you what both of these rooms look like now that they are completely finished. In the sitting room, it's looking so much more minimal and less cluttered because I'm not using furniture to cover up the skirting boards anymore. I haven't put my artwork and prints back on the wall yet, but I will at some point in time. I'm kind of just very excited to decorate for Christmas, so I think I'll get that underway first. I actually switched the placement of the TV and the sofa and it made the room feel so much bigger. And as for the dining room, this space once again looks so much more clean and minimal. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with the alcoves and I know I want to put lots of print and artwork on the walls, so stay tuned for January once I've turned this place into a winter wonderland and then completely dismantled it all, then I think I'm gonna finally put the finishing touches on the dining room. So on that note, I think it's really time I wrapped up this video and I say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around with me on this journey of doing my crumbly old house up. I still have some more things to do, so <laughs> until next time, thanks for watching, happy DIYing, and I'll see you soon. Bye.